Thank you. Uh, I'm Alan Lin from PSA Computing Group at Northwestern University. Uh, in this talk, we are going to see how we could improve the user interaction of personal navigation technology by analyzing catastrophic car accidents. Uh, we did this work with collaborators from U the University of Minnesota and University of Bremen. So I will start it off by sharing a personal story. Last Christmas, my girlfriend and I were driving in Arizona from Sedona to Flagstaff. And of course, we ask our best friend's Google, Google map for the directions. And it's nice that it at least gave us a blanket alert of the upcoming snowstorm. Uh, but despite the, best, the bad weather, uh, it still suggests us the shortest route. However, we could never imagine that there's part of this route that looks like this. Neither did we know that this is a steep uphill, uh, is the last travel scenic route, and imagine all of this happening under the, the context of the blizzard. So when we get there, the road had been covered with four inches of snows. Our two-wheel drive, Nissan Versa, ended up skidding on this steep uphill road in the flying snowflakes without any signals, without any cars around us. And in other words, we are trapped. So I was extremely panicked. Otherwise, I would have remembered to take some good photos to use in this presentation. Um, <laughs> We ended up just carefully sliding down the hill back to Sedona and took the alternative route, which is an interstate highway, and finally arrived at Flagstaff. So this is my story where I was led into a dangerous situation by using personal navigation technolo technologies. I narrowly escaped, but many people are not as lucky as I was. Um, indeed, from time to time, we saw that tourists were routed onto, uh, into the Pacific Oceans, buses were routed to get stuck under the bridge, and this kind of stories just go on and on and on and on. Um, so people laugh at these stories and blame them on the human errors. But as HCI researchers, we understand that humans make mistakes. And it is our responsibility to analyze the failure and improve the system, uh, system design to minimize the chances for human error. So we set it out to um, answer these two questions. First, what happened in this catastrophic GPS accidents? And second, how can we improve the design of the system to prevent these accidents in future? Our work fills in a gap in the existing literature. Previously, HCI community have mainly studied GPS user interaction issues on the standard scenarios. And um, by contrast, our work investigated the user inter interaction issues on the catastrophic scenarios and proposed safety, design, um, safety critical design implications. So how did we collect the um, deaths by GPS incidents? It turned out that this is very challenging due to several reasons. First, we checked with both national and local transportation safety administrations in both US and Europe, and none of them maintain such data set. Second, we can't conduct conventional observational study due to the relative rarity of the events. And third, it's going to be difficult to try to reproduce um, these scenarios in lab experiments because we don't really know what they are. Thankfully, Public health researchers have run into similar situations, and their solution is to use an unexpected data source, the news articles. For instance, um, they use news articles to analyze homicide-suicide phenomenon in the United States, and they replicated the same study in Netherlands and Italy. Building on their method, our method includes two steps. In the first step, we developed a corpus of relevant news articles by querying general purpose news database. In our case, this is LexisNexis. And to ensure comprehensive and un unbiased query stream, we leverage best practices of searching news database from communication studies to iteratively build and validate the query stream. And in the end, our corpus include 158 unique news articles. In the second step, we employ the relatively standard qualitative coding procedure. For each article, we code it on a set of dimensions which focus on different aspects of the news article. Um, these coding dimensions you see on the screen are used to describe the incidents. For example, seriousness dim dimension contains codes to describe if deaths are involved or is simply a waste of time. Type dimension describes if the vehicle was stranded or crashed or trespassing, etc. Um, our coding dimensions also describe the weather, road surface, vehicle types, etc. Um, another type of dimension analyzed how GPS technologies contributed to the accidents behind the scene. 
And obviously, coding this dimension requires substantial expertise on spatial technologies. And we are very lucky to have a high quality coder teams. Um, and each of them received bo both a master degree in computer science and a master degree in geography and GI science. So that they will be able to code uh, if it's the missing attributes that cause the problem, or if it's the uh, instructions that cause the problem, et cetera. And now let's look at the coding results, which essentially answer our research question one. What happened in these deaths by GPS um, incidents? We first look at some themes in the descriptions of the incidents and then look at the themes in the technological causes. So looking at the seriousness of the incidents, we find 52 people died in 44 incidents. Um, and this is a huge number of deaths. It also reminded us that behind the letters while reading these GPS failure stories, uh, there are real tears and sufferings from the families that are impacted. We also noted that many other GPS-involved incidents only led to injuries, property damages, or simply a waste of time. Looking at the types of incidents, we found that single vehicle collisions occurred the most. So what does this type of incidents actually include? Well, it includes the incidents where the vehicle crashes with the objects in the environment, such as the, with the roadside and guardrail, with the low overhead bridge, and with buildings. Besides um, the vehicle collisions, we also see many, many types of unconventional incidents. Um, we see many people stranded in the wilderness, such as these Oregon couple and their baby selected the shortest route option and was routed to get stuck in the forest um, overnight. They were so hopeless that they even recorded a goodbye video to their family member. Some drivers were routed thousands of miles away due to wrong geocoding, such as a group of Belgian soccer fans who typed in whales in their GPS with the hope of going to Cardiff Millennium Stadium, but was routed to a village named Wales in South Yorkshire in UK. Um, in some incidents, the driver was sent to the wrong side of the highway, such as a person who drove 48 kilometers on the wrong side of the highway after following the instructions to enter the wrong ramp. Yet, in some incidents, the drivers uh, trespassed and resulted in legal consequences, such as a St. Louis man being routed to a private driveway and ended up fighting with the owners. Among the stranded uh, incidents we just saw, uh, we found many of them are traveling on dirt roads uh, or gravel road under the bad weather. So in our previous case, the couple uh, who was trapped in the forest overnight was actually stranded on a forest service road under snowy weather. And okay, let's now look at the themes in the technological causes. Uh, first theme has to do with the attributes in the GPS database, which refers to the key properties um, of the road geometry. Our coding results show that 64, which are more than half of the instances we coded, are attributed to missing and incorrect attributes. We additionally coded the types of the attributes that are missing. And the most common case is missing physical attributes of the road, such as road surface, road width, and width clearance height. So missing these attributes lead to the incidents such as crashing on the narrow lane or being stranded on the dirt road and get stuck under the overhead bridge. Notably, missing another set of attributes, which are called space usage rules, um, are also relatively common. And these attributes describe the human designed rules um, of using the physical space, which include traffic rules, temporary blockage, geopolitical boundary, and private area. For example, fail to recognize the geopolitical boundary, GPS routed a honeymoon couple to cross US Canadian borders. The couple was arrested and detained due to the failure to declare a handgun at the customs. Next technological cause is related to the visual and audio instructions of GPS. We found um, 18 such incidents in our corpus. While previous research uh, usually suggests minimal instructions to avoid distractions, our corpus suggested something different. That is, um, it's dangerous to provide insufficient instructions at the complex geography. So for example, this is a place where one of the incidents actually occurred and uh, has pretty complicated geography. In the evening, the driver wanted to turn right to the ramp but ended up turning too early to the railroad rack um, and drove on it for a distance before it got stuck. So let's try to reenact what happened then. So driving at night, the visibility of the environment is much worse, so it's harder for him to distinguish the railroad uh, from the actual road Additionally, if he looks at his GPS, 
he wouldn't notice the railroad track because GPS visualization purposefully downplayed the railroad to simplify the information. In this case, the oversimplified visual and audio instruction did, didn't provide enough information for the driver to handle the complex geography at night. The previous case also showed another technological cause, which is map matching. Uh, so what is map matching? We know that the vehicle's GPS location will not be exactly on the road due to signal errors. So to mitigate this in inaccuracy, map matching is used to uh, automatically snap the vehicle to the nearest road. In previous case, while he was driving on the real road, uh, you might wonder why didn't the GPS alert the driver before he got stuck? Well, it's very likely that um, GPS map matching te techniques snap the vehicle to the nearest actual road, which is a ramp, consequently not alerting the driver. Similarly, the map matching technique is likely the reason why GPS failed to alert the drivers when they drove uh, on the wrong side of the divided highway. So for the limit of time, I can't go uh, cover all the themes in the coding results, and we encourage you to check out our papers to learn more. Besides, uh, uh, so based on these fi findings, we suggest uh, a set of design implications. Before we talk about them, we want to highlight that these design implications um, are not solutions we can't, which can be implemented directly, but suggest the directions future GPS design should look into. Previously, we showed that missing attributes play a substantial role uh, in the catastrophic incidents. So that is, data providers are adding the road geometries to GPS database faster than adding the necessary attributes. Indeed, existing computer vision algorithms could automatically extract road segments from satellite imageries with very high accuracy, but extracting the attributes of the road is still proved difficult. As a result, we suggest that um, developers might want to defer adding geometries into GPS database until minimal amount of attributes are collected. And looking at our previous coding results, these attributes should include at least physical attributes of the road, such as road surface, um, road width, and clearance height. Second, we've seen many incidents um, can be prevented if GPS understands the limitations of the uh, vehicle. For example, uh, it's unsafe for sedan to drive down rough road and double-decker to drive on the road with low clearance height. So coupled with good coverage of the attributes, incorporating vehicle type information uh, will be a straightforward way to maintain safety. Weather information should also be considered more seriously and integrated into routing algorithms than simply the blanket warning that we see um, at the beginning. For instance, uh, if it has snowed um, 10 centimeters and the temperature has stayed below freezing, GPS should recommend that uh, sedan driver to stick with highway. We also showed how a useful spatial computing algorithms map matching could backfire, especially when parallel geometries exist. Uh, we suggest that future research might want to look into um, how to smartly reduce uh, matching radius when traveling on uh, parallel geometries for map matching algorithm. We identified that uh, instruction could be too simple at complex geography. Uh, we suggest that the research community and GPS designers could uh, look at first um, how to automatically de detect these complex geographies on map, and second, how to develop interface to better support users in this context. Um, finally, let's take some time to think about the news article approach that we used. To the best of our knowledge, um, our use of the news article data is novel to the HCI research, so we want to highlight the limitations and strengths of this approach here. Um, the biggest strength of this method is that it allows us to study phenomena that are impossible to study otherwise. Uh, especially those topics that have no official data set, are relatively rare to observe, and not reproducible uh, in the lab. However, we also acknowledge that news articles have inherent biases. Most notably, there is the risk of newsworthiness bias, uh, which refers to an overrepresentation of accidental incidents and more fatal incidents. Um, in the context of this project, all incidents that we examined are accidental in nature, making um, the first bias less relevant. However, a potential bias towards the fatal accidents is important to consider when interpreting our results. So um, because of these biases, we identify a set of prerequisites um, for the research topics that are suitable to use the news articles approach. 
besides the three benefits that we just mentioned before, the phenomenon must also attract enough public interest for news articles to have substantial um, coverages. Um, and we brainstormed several HDI uh, problems that might satisfy these prerequisites. So for example, um, analyzing the accidents um, of people who played Pokemon Go and uh, looking at the conflicts between Airbnb hosts and clients. In terms of future work, uh, we're thinking about first to extend the ge geographic scope of this study to non-English uh, speaking countries, and second, uh, to build predictive model to evaluate the risk of a given route. Uh, with that, thank you for attending this talk, and we will open up for questions. Uh, Marina Kogan, University of Colorado Boulder. First of all, thank you so much for acknowledging the newsworthiness bias. I really appreciate that. That was going to be first question, uh, yes. but thank you. Um, secondly, uh, considering that um, Detecting the road attributes is hard automatically, as you mentioned. Right. Do you see a role for crowdsourcing platforms, like maybe OpenStreetMap or other kinds of plat platforms where users could crowdsource those attributes locally? Thank right. Um, that's a really good point. So crowdsourcing is definitely something that we're thinking about. Um, but so uh, I encourage you to check out the paper on Wednesday that is talking about the standardization of OpenStreetMap data set, especially on the attributes. So I defer the author of that paper, uh, which is also from the group, to answer those questions. But yes, that's very, uh, crowdsourcing is a very uh, legitimate way. Hi, Caleb Southern from Georgia Tech. Yes. And I have a question that's be, um, very interesting work, but I have a question that's beyond the scope of what you cover in this paper, but maybe right. you have some thoughts on it. Is what do you think about um, the driver's responsibility as people in terms of do I trust the machine, and, and am I just following orders from the machine blindly, yes. considering these kind of errors? Um, that's a really good point. So as we were conducting this research, as one point that I made is, you know, people often laugh at these stories. They're thinking that, you know, uh, you can't prevent this, you know, silly people just following GPS blindly and driving to the waters or off the bridge. But um, so as a, as a uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I think from HCI point of view, uh, since we designed the system, so we know that we have the power to minimize uh, these human errors up front when we design the system, adding more features, adding more you know cautions and uh, for the user. So I'm thinking from an HCI point of view, I think it's sh for sure any system would have people you know fall on them. But as HCI researchers, our responsibility is to think uh, really hard to um, how to minimize the human error in the system. Hi, Dan Russell from Google. Uh, yes. But in a previous life, when I was an undergraduate, I worked in a truck yard. And one of the things that truck yard dispatchers do is they tell the truck, go on this route, take this route, do not go under that bridge, do not go between those houses. And so that's the practice then. And so I think to understand your study, one of the things we'd have to understand is what was the preceding data rate? That is, what was it 10 years ago? So has it gotten better? Is this terrible? Or is this actually an improvement? We're saving lives. Do you have any idea what the base rate was pre-GPS deployment? That's a really hard question. So well, our data set are all about right? GPS. Because I mean, you're, you're critiquing the whole deployment. All we know, we're saving thousands of lives a year. True? Right. Um, so. That's a really good point. I would say we didn't, I, I, I admit that we didn't look at you know, how the death rate or the accident rate is pre-GPS era. Um, but one of the things that you know, we have to admit is that GPS is so preva pre prevalent today and every company, you know, GPS and truck companies and the double-decker, you know, the megabus company were using that. So I think realistically it's really hard to ask them to fall back into, you know, into the previous stage and, uh, you know, just to, you know, uh, you follow the, the direct directions. Reports, you could look at news reports pre-1990. Yeah. You do an um, estimate that way. Right. Yeah. Thanks for the suggestion. Now, we'll, we'll, take that, yeah. we'll take that as a future direction work. I'm not the only one who's